All right, let's talk about 808 bass lines. It's a topic so simple and yet so complex that we'll be tackling it in a two-part series. Today in part one, let's go from the basics all the way up to a pretty awesome 808 bass line. But let's start by defining what exactly we mean when we say 808 bass lines. Originally, the kick drum of the 808 drum machine was loved by early hip-hop producers for its, uh, well, uh, perhaps ad-rock from the Beastie Boys can tell you. The 808 boom. Precisely. And by the 90s, 808 kick drums were being loaded into samplers, distorted, and as is the natural tendency of samplers, they were being pitched up and down. Suddenly, we have the origins of the 808 bass line. By the time 808 basses became the defining staple of trap music, most of them had evolved from relying on the long decay of an 808 sample to being created using modern synths and plugins. Recently, we met up with Key Wayne, a multi-platinum, Grammy-nominated producer whose 808 basses can be found on hits by Beyoncé, Drake, Ariana Grande, Big Sean, and many more. And his go-to 808 bass method is pretty straightforward. They have a sub and reason that sounds like a kick by itself. So when you put a kick on top of it, it hits even harder. It's called the Dirty South Sub. Then I tweak that shit usually with the scream brings the color out yeah that's it a reason factory synth preset run through a slightly modified reason distortion preset and if it's good enough for beyonce it's probably good enough for us today while we dive deeper into sound design and making a custom 808 bass instrument don't lose sight of the fact that as complex as 808 basses can be they can also be simple if that works for you our beat here is in the style of the current pop-trap crossover sound we hear so much of these days. Obviously, it sounds thin now because it's lacking the bass. So let's start with an empty combinator, which will house all the devices which make up our sound. Now it's good practice to immediately drag in a line mixer so we can blend the instruments or effects that we include. While 808 basses originally came from kick drum samples, nowadays the standard convention is to treat the attack punch of the kick and the tonal sustain of the bass as two separate entities. For the tonal sustain, let's actually start the exact same way that Key Wayne does. I'll do a search for Dirty South to find the subtractor patch he was using in the factory sounds, and I'll drag it into my combinator underneath the mixer. Our sound is already off to a good start. In fact, the only change I want to make right now is to reduce the release slider so that our sub bass doesn't ring out so much when we release the key. If we were to look at our sub tone in the Spectrum EQ window, we can see that our bass has loads of the fundamental frequency, but it lacks any upper harmonics that will help our tone cut through the mix and work on smaller speakers. We can enhance and even create upper harmonics using saturation. I'll drag a pulverizer under my subtractor and right click to reset it. Now, as I sustain a note and dial up the dirt, you can hear and see the harmonics appear in our tone. I'll add a little squash to even out the balance of the fundamental and the harmonic frequencies. So now we have some harmonics to work with, but let's continue to color our sound with even more saturation. The process of sound design when it comes to 808 basses is often experimenting with different types of distortion and saturation to sculpt your sound. So let's bring in another type of saturation, from Scream 4, which we'll right-click and reset to its default also. I can try any of Scream's distortion types. But I like the hollow sound of its tape saturation. In fact, we can use the three-band EQ to create even more of that mid-scoop. And you know what goes great with all this saturation? More saturation! SoftTube makes a great, simple saturation knob. And perhaps best of all, it's a free download in the Propellerhead shop. Let's drag that in and dial up some more low-frequency growl. That's sounding nice. I'll finish it off by adding an Audiomatic Retro Transformer to boost the bottom end and scoop some of those mid frequencies. And we now have a nice, dirty 808 sub frequency tone. But remember, 808 basses have their roots in kick drums. And what we're lacking in our sound is that punchy attack transient. 
One very obvious way to make our attack sound like an 808 kick drum is to use an 808 kick drum. So let's drag in a Kong drum designer just below our mixer and it will automatically route itself to our second channel. And as before, I'll right click and reset to clear out the default patch. There are tons of 808 samples in Reasons Factory Sounds when we search for 808, but I'm interested in a bass drum with a sharp attack to add punch to my subtone. If I scroll down, you'll notice one sample called 808 Bass Drum Sharp Attack. That has all the things I want, so let's drag that onto our first pad. But if we play some notes, you'll notice a problem. On Kong, pads are assigned to specific MIDI notes, but we don't want Kong playing other pads. The first step is to make sure Kong doesn't respond to all those different MIDI notes. By expanding the programmer area, we can select the devices in our combinator and make changes to their individual behavior. In this case, we'll select our Kong and disable receive notes. Now my Kong pads don't trigger when I play MIDI notes. But what we really want is for Kong to trigger one specific pad from every incoming note. We can do that using a simple MIDI to CV gate converter. Sound complicated? It's really not. Follow along and I'll show you what I mean. In our Utilities section, we'll drag in an RPG-8 monophonic arpeggiator into our rack above Kong. If you're already wondering what an arpeggiator is doing on a kick drum, don't worry. The RPG-8 actually has two core functions. The obvious one is that it's an arpeggiator, which you can tell from the name, but we're not interested in its arpeggiator. In fact, our first step is to turn off the arpeggiator. We'll be focusing on this side of the RPG-8, and that's its second core function, a MIDI to CV converter. The RPG-8 is a wonderful bridge between the human world of MIDI notes we play on our keyboard and the modular world on the back of Reason's rack. If we press the tab key to flip the rack, you'll see that so far, all the modular audio cabling has been done automatically for us, which is great. But now we want to wire our own cable between the RPG-8 and our Kong that will take any MIDI note received by the RPG-8 and send it to our Kong in what's called a gate trigger. A gate is a simple electrical pulse which travels down our cable and triggers our pad in Kong. It's as simple as dragging a cable from the RPG-8's gate out CV to pad 1's gate in jack. Now, whichever key I press, RPG-8 will send a trigger pulse to our Kong pad with our kick drum sample. If we temporarily mute our subfrequencies, we can hear the solo punch of our kick drum. Let's now balance our two channel volumes so we can hear both elements clearly, the attack punch and the sustained subharmonics. That sounds about right to me. Congratulations, you've just designed a custom 808 bass. Now let's get down to using it. You've probably almost forgotten our beat by now, right? Remember this? Let's add some dirty 808 bass. Now, 808 bass lines are nothing if not experimental. To apply a fixed set of rules to them is to betray the essence of the 808 bass. So please, don't take this stuff as gospel. But to help you get started, let's consider some strategies. First of all, 808 basses work well with empty space. You don't have to fill every available beat with music. In fact, the absence of the bass can make it feel that much heavier when it comes in again. I'm going to record a foundation part that is simply the root notes of the chords on the first beat of each bar, but releasing in time for the trap snare to hit on the second beat. Now let's fill it out a little bit more with non-binding, non-gospel rule number two. 808 bass lines like to play off what's called perfect intervals. That means note intervals like the root, the fourth, the fifth, and the octave in our scale. Any guitarist out there will recognize these intervals from so-called power chords because they sound big and powerful. I want to remember to keep my bass line sparse, but let's fill in some perfect intervals leading into each note. And while I'm doing that, I'll show you on screen the perfect intervals between the notes.
our final adjustment to our baseline today will be non-binding, non-gospel rule number three. 808 baselines like to do pitch dives. You will often hear the pitch of 808 basses swooping up or down in big jumps. You might find you prefer to do these live while you record, but we can also draw them in with pitch automation after the fact. First, though, I want to jump in and make one more change to my sub-frequency synth. I'll change the default pitch bend range from 7 to 12, giving me a full octave range to move up or down. The first note that leads into a chord change is this one. Beneath it, I'll draw in a fairly simple pitch dive. I'll turn off snap to let me position my automation points wherever I want. It takes three points to make this work. There's the point where my dive starts, which I want to come in a little after the note has had time to sound. Then there's the end of the dive, which can come at the end of my note's duration and will be all the way at the bottom of my pitch bend range. And then there's the third point that returns my pitch bend back to zero for the next note. And it sounds like this. I can repeat that process for the other leading notes, or I can even just lasso the automation I've already made, hold down Option on a Mac or Control on Windows, then click and drag to duplicate those automation points. But since the next note is shorter, I'll want to move these points backwards so my dive ends on time. And we'll do the same thing for our next leading note. The last three notes happen so quickly that we don't have time to dive them. We'll just leave them alone. But the first note could get a different type of dive. Let's chop it in half, and we'll move the latter half up a perfect octave, and let's dive that note back down. So you see, the process of creating 808 basses now enters the realm of experimentation. In other words, it's up to you to try what you like. But we've created a really nice, dirty, sub-harmonically rich 808 bass from scratch. Now feel free to make your own using different devices and see how they turn out. In fact, the approach to 808 basses is so varied and so popular in modern styles that we'll be revisiting this topic in a sequel to this tutorial. Next time, we're going to get even more advanced and make a refined sounding 808 bass that you are going to love. Here's just a little taste of what we'll be doing. Trust me, you'll want to tune in.